Daniel Levy 1, Manchester City 0. Hi, I'm Sarah, and welcome back to Footy Talks. It's official. England captain Harry Kane failed in his bid to force a move away from North London and will remain at Tottenham this season after Spurs chairman Daniel Levy stood firm to keep hold of his prized asset. How will that affect the title race is anyone's guess, but one thing's for sure, Manchester City still need a striker and pretty badly at that. With available world-class goal scorers in short supply, could rumors be true that last-minute move for Cristiano Ronaldo is still on the cards? Man United fans will be hoping they aren't, but one striker who made an instant impact on his return to the Premiership was Romelu Lukaku, and after talking up Chelsea's title-winning credentials last week, let's go to James Sherman for what he's looking out for this weekend. Well, it's week three of the Premier League, and let's get crazy and call this a title decider. Okay, maybe that's just a, a little too crazy, but Liverpool Chelsea is our first humdinger of a marquee matchup this season. Now, traditionally, this one has plenty of goals, but I don't think we'll see that this weekend. Neither side has conceded yet, and despite all the brilliance up front from Lukaku to Salah, the defences are staunch. Now, under Thomas Tuchel, Chelsea have conceded just 17 in 33 matches, and Liverpool, well, they have Virgil van Dijk. 100% healthy once again looking really good and I tell you what the beast against Big Verge that's a bit sick isn't it now the Reds are in form going back to last season they're unbeaten in 12 games with 10 wins in that time and they love playing Chelsea having won four of the past five encounters it will be tight yes but I like Liverpool here at plus 148 Defoe take the under and why not throw Mo Salah in as a first goal scorer at a juicy plus 520 Thanks, James. Yes, it was the Carabao Cup, and yes, it was against lowly opposition, but on Wednesday, Arsenal finally managed to score a goal this season in what went on to be a 6-0 demolition of West Brom. Will that result be a new beginning or a false dawn for Mikel Arteta's team? On this week's Fast Money Football, I caught up with Michael Angelani to ask what's been going wrong for the Gunners and whether club legend Arteta really is the right man to turn it around at the Emirates. Michael, let's start with you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was having this conversation with a couple of friends of mine, and the reality is there's no easy solution right now as to what's going on there at Arsenal. You know, they've invested a lot of money into their signings this season. However, it, I feel like the continuing narrative is those signings never end up being the right pieces to kind of turn the Arsenal around, right? You know, it's not a matter of how much money now they're investing in the club. It's it's, it's who they're investing in. And I don't know, maybe Mikel Arteta is the guy. Maybe he's not. But I don't think there's any coach right now that can really turn this caliber of Arsenal team into what they aspire to be, which is, you know, Premier League contenders. Jelani? Yeah, yeah. I think that, you know, Arsenal is in shambles right now. Um, their fans are just upset. You see it on socials and I'm friends with some Arsenal fans and they're upset and rightfully so, you know, the tactics just aren't there. Arteta, look, there's some reports coming out that his job is in jeopardy. Um, there was something from the Telegraph this morning that said probably, you know, the next five games might determine his future there. Um, you know, they're looking at possible, you know, replacements right now. Conte, uh, you know, one of the uh, names that has been popping up. So I think that, you know, looking at their future matches, you have guys like I think West Brom is coming up. You have Norwich, Man City, um, trying to remember, Burnley. So there might be some wins there, probably. I don't know because we saw how it started. We saw how the season started for them. We weren't expecting that first match to go how it did. Um, but, you know, there's so many things that need to be fixed. Michael said it best. So um, right now, I do think that if you're going to ask me, does he keep the job? I, I hate to say this, but no, I, I don't think so. Just because so many problems have been coming up for this club right now, and it's not looking pretty at all. And Arsenal fans aren't the only ones feeling the heat right now. After starting the season in blistering fashion, Manchester United slumped to a disappointing draw at Southampton in a flat and disjointed performance that showcased many of the team's familiar failings. Let's go to Jackie for some of her potentially faulty logic at Old Trafford. Life is full of fiendish, potentially unanswerable questions. Why are we here? 
How did Donald Trump become president? Why do Brits say maths? But the most frustrating question of all right now is a footballing one. Why break the bank to buy one of the finest players in the world and then sit him on the bench like a chump? I'm looking at you, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Why spend 73 million on Jaden Sancho to solve the problem of a misfiring attack and then give Jaden Sancho a front row seat to watch the problem of a misfiring attack? Why buy World Cup winner Raphael Varane because your defense is shaky and then force him to watch 90 minutes of slapstick defending? Are you lonely on the bench, Ole? Did you buy these guys for company? If so, why not hang pitch side with Marshall and Fred instead? Every single minute those guys spend on the sidelines makes Man U a better team. Or are Sancho and Varane there with you as some kind of weird clockwork orange experiment? A sensory overload of god-awful football designed to create the ultimate footballing weapon. Because if that's the plan, it sure as shit didn't work on Donny van de Beek. Poor guy can barely even kick a ball these days, and he gets fewer minutes on the old Trafford turf than a glamorous streaker. Just look at Chelsea, it's not complicated. Break the bank for Lukaku, start Lukaku, Lukaku scores, and wins you the game. What's confusing here, Ole? It's right in the name. Player, noun, from the verb, to play? Come on, people, do the math here. Oh wait, mathematics. There's an S in there, okay. It all makes sense now, maths, I get it. Thanks, Jackie. And finally, if you haven't already seen it, check out our EPL parlay for this weekend's action. We're going for a big win for Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea, for Man City to rain on Arsenal's parade, and for a draw in the London Derby between Crystal Palace and West Ham. Take Chelsea and Man City to win and Crystal Palace to draw for a combined parlay of plus 1337. Thanks for watching, and also keep a lookout for our Champions League preview now that the group stages have been drawn.